How's it going, traveling dads? Today, we are off to Bricko Restaurant to learn how to cut, season, and grill our own steaks and grilled side dishes. Does this sound like a class for dads or what? We should have a great time learning how we can be the grill master. spending most of your time uh, with chef back in the kitchen. Like, you know, let's talk about grilling in summer. It's hot out right now. It's like, what are we gonna you know, do with this? What are we gonna go to the store and look for? So it's very more like conversive than it is me being like, hey, this is a steak and this is how we cook it. Uh, let's head back. Just know that pretty much everything's hot besides the air itself, uh, you know, all the equipment. <laughs> that we're gonna do today. I've got some flat irons that we're gonna get steak with. I've got New York strips uh, and a tenderloin. Uh, you usually see the grating on it. USD choice, so this is a choice cut. Uh, primals would be a little bit more expensive, probably like $120 at least for one. So your meat that you're looking for, go in here, where you get your tenderloin fillets and your ducks and all that. You yeah, have trim, which we'll kind of a grinder out. We'll make some beef burgers today as well. So when you get home, you get this out of your, your bag, you're like, what do I do? Right, well, first, you want to clean all your stuff off. That's your with this steak or that or a ribeye or any other types. It's always going to be waste for it. Put silver sheen to it. Uh, you try to pull it apart. You can see that there's sort of long strands that run through it. You kind of like that. It's hard to adjust. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're tough and chewy. Right, let's just go ahead and take that right off. Now, as you see, I'm not sawing with my knife. Whenever you work with meat, you never want to saw. You don't want to be in here trying to cut like that. Just, especially with a knife like this, I just want to let it do its own work. Throwings are a great uh, underrated cut that people kind of overlook because you know it's tough. It looks like it has a lot of fat in it. But if you cook it right, it's such a good steak. You know, here it's got uh, about six ounce steaks out of it. So I'll take this little bit off here because if I try to start with a steak up here, it's not going to look very nice. Then you get in here and you see the marbling and the fat. Like I said, there's not a lot of marbling in a tenderloin. That's, that's part of what makes it so tender is it doesn't have that extra fat. Now this is back at the butt, so this is probably a good 18 ounce piece. So I can get at least one nice six ounce steak out of it. Then I get to the chain, which is kind of a little intimidating, but it's really not anything scary. Between these. Uh, and you can sit and take one apart. Might take a little bit. I don't get that into it. I just kind of flip it around and then just take what meat I can get off. Like that, let's get trimmed meat. Next is the New York strip, which you're going to get some of these to take home. Uh, this one's also a choice. It's where you get your, your steaks right out of. And then as you work down, there's this little eye that starts to come out right about here. It'll start real small and then get to this big piece and there's some fat that runs around it. That isn't really the best. So when I get down to that part, we'll kind of switch it up and I'll show you what you can do with that at the end. Same thing, I'm gonna go and take some of this extra fat or something that maybe got butchered up. Like there's a deep cut here. I'm gonna to try to work around. You can cut your steaks and then trim them up. Oh, I see. But it's hard to judge for size then. So I usually take it off beforehand. So there's like a little uh, flapper, what, I don't know what you would call it if it has a name to it. It just kind of falls off here. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take this off. Going back to fat. So this is that fat tail that I took off. Not really wanted fat because when it breaks down, it just melts away or burns or turns crisply. It's not like pork fat where you can pretty much use all whatever type of pork fat it is. Uh, and that's pretty much all the trimming that I really do for this. I might take a little bit more of this off. Yeah, because I don't want to take this off. That's, that's what people look for in a strip that little strip of fat on the back. I'm gonna start on the side that doesn't have the eye in. I pretty much go into cutting my steaks and you can cut them however big you want. <laughs> uh, if you want to cut a roast, you can cut one off that big. Um, you do a roast at this You could, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, there's no reason why. It doesn't have to be a number by. 
you know, do a some project or anything. So I take, this is just for, for making look nice purposes, that first piece off, and you know, that could be a tester piece at home. But just so I have a nice flush cut going off here. And then I just go through, I'm shooting for about, let's say 12 ounces. I'll get this down. All right, so 13 and a half, which is also kind of good, because if I wanted to, I could take a little bit more of this fat off. Here's some of that uh, piece that I took off earlier that I don't want. So, it's as simple as that. And then I just go down and start cutting my steaks off. It's so funny, it's so hard for me to picture until you're doing it now. You know, there's this big massive thing that you see at the store that's yep. 80 bucks, and then after like a little bit of work and a little bit of a slice, it's like, oh, that's what I see. Right. When, you know, yeah, like, you'll, you'll see that in the pack. dollars for that or whatever. Yeah, and, and, you know, you're saving money. Um, and if you have a nice crybacker or, or food saver, you can freeze steaks. No, you just cut it in half, like that. So that would be called a Boston cut strip. Uh, it's the same as Kentucky strip or whatever. It's just being able to utilize this part. Um, so you can see why it's not the best for having, you know, that versus that. It's obviously different. It has a little bit more chew and gristle in it. Same difference between Boston and New York. Yeah, I'm going to leave this for you guys to kind of mess with you and cut your own steaks off of it. So that way you can screw it up or something like that. <laughs> um, I also have some chicken breasts over there thawing out. I have some pork flat irons we can play with. Um, they're really nice. Same, same as a beef flat iron. They come from the shoulder, but they're super delicious. I think they actually lard them, which is just putting more fat onto them when they uh, individually seal them. Grinder. This is, I don't know how big this one is. Uh, it's obviously bigger than something you'd buy at home. You can get little one and a half horsepower ones uh, that do the same job. You just have to cut your meat up a little bit finer. Simple as putting your stuff in. Once you think you have a nice mixture.
until they're almost you know, 10 percent from where they should be get it out let it sit it'll carry over about five degrees or so uh, and then when we're ready to heat it up put it back on the road just for a quick heat so that's how we can kind of flow here and then kind of teach you guys the same thing so that way you know you can do this at home you don't have to like I said, be grill plate you don't have to do that you can let the meat sit for a little bit and just pop it back in the oven just to heat it up for a little bit My front oven's always at 425, that's for quick roasting. My back ovens are at like 375, for baking or whatever uh, veggies for cooking. Time-wise, it depends on the thickness of the steak, depends on the cut of the steak. So like for those, how long you can do it for a medium rare? For those, maybe put them in for three minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do clarified butter on it. Everything gets butter here. That's what makes restaurant food taste so good. <laughs> The grill master class at Brico was amazing. I learned so much about cooking and really it boils down to simplicity. Just keep it simple, keep it easy, and you will have great food. At least that's what I learned from Chef Devin today.